and welcome back to Becca's Kitchen. I hope you've had a chance to stop by my blog at notdeprived.blogspot.com. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Today I'd like to share a recipe with you that has become one of my husband's favorites. Like I said before, we've decided to go gluten-free, and one of the biggest disappointments I hear from people who have celiac disease, or gluten intolerance, or they've just decided to go gluten-free due to health reasons, is that they can't get a really good pizza. So I'm going to show you a recipe of a very flavorful pizza that you can make at home. Let's look at the ingredients. I have four large eggs here that I've already whisked together. This is two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, a quarter cup of plain yogurt. This is a quarter cup of coconut flour. This is a wonderful gluten-free flour to have on hand because it's low in calories. It's also less expensive than almond meal flour and other flours that are a little more pricey. So it's a great flour to have on hand. This is three quarters of a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese a quarter cup of shredded Parmesan. This is golden flaxseed meal that I ground myself. Here we have some onion powder, which is a teaspoonful, a teaspoonful of garlic powder as well, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar, and a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now let's put them together. Now because I'm going to be working with a little bit of flour, I'm going to use this lovely apron that I actually received as a gift from a family in South Korea. I'm going to mix all of the dry ingredients together first. We'll put in the coconut flour, all of the spices. We're going to leave out the mozzarella. That's going to be the last thing that we put in. We'll put in the Parmesan cheese and the flax meal. Then we'll move over to our KitchenAid mixer again. And of course you can do all of this by hand if you don't have a mixer, but it does make things very nice and easy. So the eggs, the oil, and the yogurt. We put that in and start whisking it together. I'm going to mix together our dry ingredients and then I'm going to change out our mixer attachment here. We'll add the dry ingredients and mix those a little bit and then we will add the mozzarella. And it's that easy and quick. Now of course you can go to almost any restaurant now and get a gluten-free pizza because more and more restaurants are providing it. However, it can, again, be a little bit pricey, so it's nice to be able to do something like this at home. Lastly, we're going to add the mozzarella. I've already preheated the oven to 375 degrees, and I've put my pizza stone in so that it's preheating as well. So it's almost mixed, and we're ready to put it on the stone. Now we're just going to scoop this out and put it on our preheated pizza stone. As you can see, it's a pretty wet mix. So it's not like a regular pizza dough that you would have. So you have to use your spatula to just kind of shape it into a circle. And you can make it as thick or as thin as you'd like. Just pat it around. If you'd like to make this into breadsticks, you can just add some shredded cheese at this point. And then you're going to bake it for 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown. After that, we'll add the toppings to make a pizza. Okay, it's been about 15 to 20 minutes and our crust is beautiful. Look at that. We're going to move it over here, and I'm going to put on some of my homemade sauce. 
Be sure to check out my blog to find the recipe for this sauce. It's a little bit chunky. You can make it as chunky as you want. And you can also add any topping that you want. Because I'm making this for my husband and my sons, I'm going to make pepperoni and put on a few mushrooms for my husband. So we just spread that out really nice. And then you just add the toppings as you wish. Now this pepperoni is butterball turkey pepperoni because one of the things I've discovered is that most pepperoni contains gluten. There are many hidden sources of gluten, so you have to be careful to read all the ingredients. Once you get the hang of it, it's not so hard, but in the beginning it's important to read as many ingredient labels as you can. Okay, so we've put all of our toppings on and we've given it a good sprinkle of cheese. Again, you can put whatever toppings you want on top of this. It's uh, very versatile. Now we're going to put it in the oven again for about 10 minutes, but just keep an eye on it because everybody likes their pizza a different stage of doneness. So we'll put that in and in a few minutes we'll have a delicious pizza. Okay, we're just about to hear the beep and our beautiful homemade pizza is done. Now what I did was uh, the 10 minutes at 375 and then just put it under the broiler for another couple of minutes to give the cheese that nice texture on top. So all that's left to do now is just slice it up and serve it. But first of all, I just want to show you the bottom of the crust. You see that it's nice and crispy the way most people like them. So we're just going to slice these up. If you think this looks good, please be sure to rate, comment, or subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to look us up on Facebook at Not Deprived, and also follow us on Twitter and Pinterest. As you can see, with just a little planning and a little work at home, you can make a delicious pizza for your entire family that everybody loves, and you will definitely not feel deprived. It's taste test time!